What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are going to be looking at the biggest winners and losers of the NFL Combine at day number three. So if you guys are new to the channel, feel free to stick around. This is usually a video for my homers, the people who are regulars of the channel, but I like to be able to make sure that you guys enjoy it as well. Feel free to put some pointers down below because put every single winner and loser everybody affected their stock a little bit here and there these are just some of the mainstays i can of course talk about some honorable mentions while we're in the video but let's start on a high note with the winners and starting off is bryce ford wheaton obviously he tested out very well in the four threes at over 220 pounds that's awesome and not mistaken the last two times that there was like a guy with a certain um vertical and then that type of uh sub four four speed they were drafted by the Seahawks, so had to toss that in there. Shout out to the whole crew there at NFL Plus for being able to put that little tidbit of knowledge there. But any team that's looking for him to be a wide receiver for, that'd be a pretty damn awesome place to go. Uh, someone who could be that X build. So again, you look at that size, six foot four, 221 pounds. That's great. I did see him do, I think he dropped a couple of balls in the drills, which is actually not characteristic of him based off of the tape that I'd seen. I thought that he was pretty solid. He was a top 20 wide receiver for me, and I think he's going to stay there. That's the upgraded grade right now, 69.75, which is pretty damn nice. But yeah, great job by Bryce. Obviously not perfect, but you know he had some really big move ups in terms of athleticism, and I had to drop his hands a little bit based on his performance. Next, we got Clark Phillips. This is a super minute one. He led all DBs in bench pressing. Yes, when you got alligator arms, that will happen, but if we're talking about Roger McCreary last year, I think Clark Phillips is a better prospect, but, you know, people are just going to complain anyway. You know, it's just, he performed pretty damn well. 4.51 is very solid. I actually had him at 6.5 out of 10 on the speed. I'm a stickler when it comes to grading. It's very hard to be able to score well on my grading chart. And you know what? That's exactly how it translated. So it's not a big surprise to see Clark Phillips run like that. And he did test very well overall. So, you know, I'm going to give Clark uh, Clark Phillips the benefit of the doubt. I still think he's going to be a superstar. Again, this is not in order. This is just the guys who pop into my mind. And then, yes, I'm going to work my ass off on the graphics. So do not get on my ass about the rankings because, again, they are not in order. But, yeah, teams like the Steelers uh, who are maybe looking for that slot slash boundary hybrid, teams like that could definitely be looking in that realm. Of course, he is 184 pounds. You could see him kick to the outside. He is actually built very well. We've seen him even handle large receivers like Drake London. So very excited to see how Clark Phillips can handle the NFL. Uh, but again, other teams that are looking for a slot corner or might be intrigued about staking a smaller guy on boundary. That might be a good spot for him to go. So very excited about him. Stetson Bennett had himself a day. You know, uh, well, Will Levis was carving it up versus guys like Tyler Bajan, who to be fair, Tyler Bajan had a very good uh, combine. So he's somebody who I could put in here. Majority of the quarterbacks today performed very, very well. Max Thuggan, we'll, we'll talk about him soon. Um, probably one of those guys who did not. But Stetson Bennett was airing it out with Will Levis and honestly threw it about the same distance. And, you know, he is four inches shorter uh, and he is a lot lighter. So he actually did a very good job today. To me, he solidified himself as an early day three type of prospect. Obviously, he has those personality concerns in terms of getting arrested here in Dallas, but I honestly think he's the perfect guy to be a Dallas backup. You already know damn well he'll step in and win four games in a row, and then he'll get benched for Dak Prescott when he comes back from an injury. But I would love to see him at any of these teams that can use a mobile QB or maybe looking for someone to be a little bit better value. Throw the Seahawks in there as well. You know, he would be a great understudy behind Geno if Geno gets that longer term uh, contract. So, you know, it's great. It's great. Next, we got Anthony Richardson. Yes, I like to tease you guys by putting in an image of AR in a Panthers uniform because that is my favorite fit for him. Uh, on the Colts as well, I think he should be the number one overall pick if he is with either of those teams. Uh, New York Giants is obviously just the teaser team if he's with Dable. It's a dream fit. It's not a realistic fit. But those are the two spots where I think he should be able to uh, perform the best. And I would love to see him with Frank Reich. You know, it... I don't know if he will end up going that high, but obviously 4-4-3 speed at 244 pounds is ridiculous. And, you know, obviously set the explosion, uh, set the whole entire combine on fire with his explosive drills as well. So uh, just absolutely incredible athlete, one of one. You just got to sometimes take a shot on him. And I do trust Steichen to potentially develop that. I trust Frank Reich even more. So very intrigued to see 
how that is going to play out. Of course, Brian Dable would be a great guy to do that as well. Let's go on. Let's be little dummy downers. Let's go to the biggest losers here. Uh, Kayshawn Butte, man, he has, he fall, he's had a fall from grace. Everybody's almost, everybody's consensus wide receiver one starting out the year. He looked, he looked like he was probably like what, four, 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 five at worst and ends up being a four, five, four, five, one. And yes, technically that could be two steps to the left versus two steps in the middle. But the fact is, I think he ran a four, six, seven on his other one. I'm pretty sure that's the one where he messed up on. God only knows what the official time is for that, but did not test very well. His explosiveness was what really, really ticked us off. He was 29 inch vertical, which I think for me, who is not trained for the vertical, I think it hit like 27 inches, maybe like 25. I mean, let, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. I'm not going to try to beat Keishon Butte in a vert here. I mean, look at me. Hello. I, we can't jump. But I mean, Keishon Butte, he's had those issues with personality. Yes, get off my ass. He has had issues with personality. He, had, he was bitchy at the coaches for his usage. And then also he had a sex party. Like that's just, it's a little bit sus. It's a little bit sus. So Bro has just not been having a good offseason. It's just not great. But he is super fluid as an athlete. You do see the it factor on the field. It's just, oh my God, so many negative factors. I want to go to a place that, you know, has a solidified system in there or just has a really good coach. I think Tennessee, they could use all the wide receiver help they can get, to be fair. That's why I threw them in there. But Bill Belichick can get him in line. And I'm sure Andy Reid could get him to be able to work. But, you know, for somebody who's a lock round one, he's probably trying to um scrape the barrel uh, oops scrape the barrel at a six of round pick so next we got Jalen Hyatt this is again I'm telling you guys it's not in order it's a super minute thing we were just all hoping he'd test in the four twos he tested four four flat that's not bad at all I mean it's not he tested out he has like a smaller size at 176 like it it is what it is we all knew he was kind of skinny I thought he was maybe hopefully hoping for that 180 mark but you know, 176 is not like the worst thing in human history, but yeah, I know he actually performed better on route running than I expected in some of those like um, those zig routes. What do they even call them? I'm tripping balls on the official name, but y'all know what I'm talking about when they do like the hitches and stuff. I think he can do like he actually did that better than I expected. I think he's a great deep threat. Even at 4-4 speed, he still had, I believe, one of if not the highest 10 yard splits, which is great seeing him get off in that vertical line. So I think he's going to be perfectly fine. So it's just a little bit of a letdown. Not really a big deal. Again, look at that drop early to late second. Just because some other dudes were able to show out today. Maybe that might dissuade some guys being like, okay, well, we don't need to take a burner this early. Uh, just a little bit unfortunate. Now we go to two of the quarterbacks. Actually, I think it might have been three quarterbacks that were disappointing today. Disappointing. They performed well. But... Uh, you know, Jake Hayner on those out routes just was not hitting him. So he just had some lapses of accuracy, but great work ethic. He's one hell of a leader. You can tell uh, based on, I believe he had, a couple, he had an ACL tear the year before, but this dude just has the heart of a line. You can tell. I think he played a full drive on a torn ACL to, if not, if I'm not mistaken, win a game. So yeah, you know that he has that heart of a leader. I would love to see him in a spot that kind of values that, that leadership and that backup ability just kind of a consistent dude, probably have your raw on your roster or on your practice squad for 10 years. So I'm thinking of teams that can maximize Baker Mayfield's usage or a team that uses Colt McCoy, you know, just spots like that or Ryan Tannehill. That's why I came up with those spots. But, you know, he does definitely feel like one of those mid to early day three type of dudes that you take a swing on because he's going to be one hell of a good locker room presence. And, you know, getting guys that stick to your roster in day three isn't the easiest task in the world. This guy might be a lock for a roster him and Tyler Bajant, too. Again, got to give a shout out to that guy. He could have made the winner's list. And then Aiden O'Connell as well. Got to mention him. He had a pretty stellar day. Bro's a little bit, he's a little daunting to look at. But, you know, the ball that comes out is actually pretty damn awesome. Glad to see that. Yeah, and Jake Hayner on those deep balls actually did a very good job. So, uh, Max Thuggin, he honestly looked like the most underwhelming quarterback at the Combine. I just didn't like him at all. And I would personally say he should be a UDFA, but he did bring a TCU team that was loaded with talent uh, to the natty, essentially. So, you know, you can't really dog him. He, well, the Bulldogs did, but you can't really knock him down for that. He does have that poise under pressure. I do like to see that. But 
overall just not not an NFL quarterback but teams that are looking for that type of leader somebody who is humble who you know you might put in for a couple snaps during preseason might be able to re- be like a relief guy for like the end of a game I don't think Max Duggan's gonna throw the game away so I think some good teams in there you know Riverboat Ron might value that it's just like you know it's good spots Eagles obviously losing Minshew could be a good guy to have back there as well and then uh, this is, again, just Will Levis didn't look like that crazy in terms of his ability over the guys around him. Like, I feel like Stetson Bennett stole the show that he should have easily stolen. Like, again, this is a top 10 pick against, like, the next best guy is Stetson Bennett. Like, you should separate yourself by a significant margin. I didn't think he did. He might separate himself, like, right here. But again, he didn't steal the show. And even in the deep passing drills, I think Stetson Bennett stole the show. That's the weird thing to me. But um, uh, strength and fluidity is definitely not his. Um, definitely not what I was talking about. So I'm very curious who I uh, copied and pasted on that one. But underwhelming is the concern. I would just say the strengths. What he did demonstrate is that arm talent. He does have that arm strength, and he does have. Maybe it was right. Maybe it was just a fluid motion, but. He is knocking himself down from that QB2 mark, arguably, for a lot of people, in my opinion, to QB4. Anthony Richardson also is a product of that. Uh, CJ Stroud had a wonderful day. I don't think he really hurt or accepted his repu- like boosted his reputation. To me, I still think he's like that QB3 slash 2 talk. And it might be Bryce Young's fault, but he honestly might have moved himself into that QB3 spot with how well those two players played today. I would not be surprised to see CJ Stroud become that QB1 awesome day today someone who I could have mentioned here but there was a lot of players who performed really well two more guys who are negative Antonio Johnson had like eight reps of bench like that is absolute dog shit I'm just gonna be honest um and off season okay so I forgot to edit that as well you guys are getting a little bit of insight here um so my concerns with him is just the strength he performed pretty solid in that 40 I think it was like four or five one so that's, that's more than fine but eight reps of bench press really like that is like shitty corner level, not defensive, like slot slash safety level. That's really bad. So don't like that at all. Obviously, to be fair, size is something that he has demonstrated, but you know, solid enough athleticism. He has been pretty damn consistent on the field. It is a little bit concerning. Um, Dream fits. I do think Seattle is one of them. Other teams I could think uh, maybe the Bengals using him as a strong, that'd be a pretty good spot for him. Or even the Jets using him as a linebacker as well. You can see the Texans try to do that. You know, these former 49ers style defenses. So uh, definitely think that you could go there. Of course, that early to late second drop, it's not that significant. But it does possibly shape the role that you think he will play. And then finally, Luke Musgrave. So this is the whole entire reason I waited to put this out. Most of the tight ends didn't really do much to really change my mind. Like, I, we all kind of knew Michael Mayer wasn't fast. Uh, we all knew that Darnell Washington was going to put on a show, but he didn't really jump the way I expected to. So he got at a plus and a minus, had some really good on-field drills as well, though, to be fair. But um, Luke Musgrave, he's not 6'2", 198. I believe he tested out um, at a 250-pound rate. Doesn't really fully matter. He is, he is tight end weight. It's not. That wasn't one of the issues I had. He was the leader of the 10-yard split, which does matter. But he does have a very underwhelming 40 yard, which means like he's going to be great as a tight end, which again, that's what I'm saying. He's maybe dropping from early to late because other tight ends looked pretty damn solid comparatively. It's not a big deal, Um, but we have to nitpick here. I want to throw a tight end in here, and I think the one that might have damaged his reputation was Luke Musgrave, who I was hoping to be in that 4-4 to 4-5 range, and you know he just wasn't. So a little bit unfortunate right there. You know, it is what it is, but teams that do use a very mobile guy, especially in the short range, could be a good spot for him to go. So that's going to be the video. Again, tight end wise, there's not really much that it's hugely surprising. So that's why I'm kind of leaving it as is. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Thank you guys so much for supporting. As always, see you on the far side. Peace.